What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how to change oil in your Volkswagen Beetle. This here is a 2015 model with a 2 liter engine. However, this should be applicable to any model from 2011 to 2019. First, we're going to go over some tools and some maintenance items that are required to complete this job, as well as a few tips or tricks that I think you complete this job successfully. One of those tips will be how to reset the oil maintenance light that's popped up on your dash. If you're only here to see how to do that, I'm going to put a little time so you guys could fast forward to there. For this oil change, I'm going to be using Castrol Edge Synthetic Oil. It's the 5W30. My particular 2 liter model requires 5.8 quarts of oil. Uh, you can find your oil capacity inside your Volkswagen Beetle owner's manual. I've also chosen a Fram oil filter. To get the skid plate off under the car, I'm going to be using a 5 16 Allen as well as a T25 Torx bit. For the drain plug, going to be using a T45 Torx bit. The oil filter housing requires a 32 millimeter socket to remove. If you don't have that, you could also use a 32 millimeter wrench or even a larger crescent wrench if you had to. It's not required, but I do have a torque wrench here to properly torque the oil filter housing cap to spec. I have an oil drain bucket. Keep in mind, 5.8 quarts of oil. Make sure you have a large enough bucket. I'm also going to use two floor jacks uh, to lift the front end of the beetle up. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this cover. It just pops up. And you can see the little tabs where they enter into the cover. There's four total. While I'm here, I'm going to remove the oil fill cap and just set it to the side. Before I use my floor jacks to lift the front end of the car off the ground, I'm going to make sure I engage the parking brake so the car doesn't move out from under me. So when going to jack up the car, right behind the front wheels, you're going to see a little area. It kind of has a heavier weld on it. It's only about maybe six inches behind the edge of the wheel well. Uh, you'll notice a difference in the pattern here. What you're going to do is just slide the jack under. You just want to make sure that's where the jack makes contact. If you look in your owner's manual, it'll also point out that those are the jack points. Using another jack, I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I did on the passenger side over here on the driver's side. The next step is gonna to be to remove the skid plate from underneath the beetle here. I've counted about 18 different bolts and screws that hold this up. This is probably the worst part of the job. So 10 of the 18 bolts that hold on the skid plate, uh, pretty unique size. I don't think the average homeowner is gonna have that uh, unique size bit uh, in their possession. I have found if you use a 5 16 Allen, uh, which I have here on the impact, uh, they will come off. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started removing all 18 of these bolts. Here's a better look. Uh, you can see the, the 5 16 uh, fits in there perfectly, no slop at all. Using a T25 hex bit, I'm going to remove the remaining 8 screws. I'm going to drop it, kind of shove it towards the center of the car. Now that the skid plate's removed, we have access to our oil drain plug. I'm going to use a T45 Torx bit. Uh, i got my oil pan here, which you can't really see. Uh, we're just going to loosen that off and drain the oil out of the engine. So while the oil is draining out, we're going to go ahead and remove the cap on our oil filter housing uh, using a 32 millimeter socket. Now, if you don't have a 32 millimeter socket, you could use a wrench. Uh, if you had to, you could even use a crescent wrench. Wouldn't recommend it, but uh, if that's all you have, then uh, you, it would work for you. Nice. Pull the filter out. So let's take our used oil filter out. There we go. Just gonna clean that up just a little bit. Going to pop off this O-ring on the housing cap. You can just use a little flathead to 
get it off of there. All right, inside filter box, got a new filter and one O-ring, the one we just took off the cap. If you could in the comments, let me know what kind of filter you use. I'm always looking for good recommendations. I uh, pick up the Fram from Walmart since it's their only option there. Uh, curious if other brands would come with different O-rings. Uh, you'll have to let me know. I enjoy that tip. Thank you. With the new O-ring, I always take a little bit of oil and get it on there. I think it'll help seat properly. And just want to slide it off uh, down into that bottom groove. There we go. Just take the new filter, slide it on. It just kind of fits nice and snug down in there. Uh, one key item worth mentioning, uh, you'll see here uh, there's torque specs on the end of the cap. Uh, they're calling for 25 Newton meters. Again, if you don't have a torque wrench, not mandatory. Uh, just want to make sure it's snug. snug is tight. All right, back to filter housing. Just going to reinstall the new filter. Just get it hand tight, and then we'll torque it down with a torque wrench here. This is probably overkill, but going to use a torque wrench. There we go. Before we go ahead and reinstall the oil drain plug, uh, one tip I want to go over for you guys. Uh, here today I'm going to be reinstalling a new OEM oil drain plug as well as a new uh, drain plug crush washer. I ran into an issue when the car was under 10,000 miles where I had oil leaking from a drain plug that was tight. The only thing I could figure out is that maybe the crush washer was damaged in some type of way and wasn't providing enough sealant. Uh, from there on out, each oil change, I've decided just to change the, the plug and the crush washer. Never had this issue. Not with a car, not with a motorcycle. Uh, so that's why I've chosen to do this. You can pick these up from ecstuning.com to get the replacements. If you want to pause the screen, you can get the part number on the oil drain plug. And there's the one for the crush washer. Okay, let's get back under there and get the plug in. All right, now that oil has finished draining out of our oil pan, going to reinstall the new oil drain plug. Using a T45 once again, just going to snug up this oil drain plug. Remember, snug is tight. You do not want to strip the threads out on this bolt. All right, we're already back to my least favorite portion of this job, and that is dealing with the skid plate. I'm just going to install a few bolts in the front, and then the rear, then I'll go through and retorque them down. Another tip is just to install these all finger tight uh, until they're all lined up, all 18 of them. And then go through and you can torque them up with a wrench or uh, impact, whatever you choose to use. Up next, the slowly gonna start lowering our jack stands on the car. It's gonna do each side a little bit till it's on the ground. Okay, time to start adding the new oil. Just gonna use a funnel and pour it in. If you open up the owner's manual, you'll see that the two liter, which I have here, calls for 5.8 quarts. See where our level's at. I'll start the car and then we'll add from there. It's a lot easier to add than it is to remove oil from the car. Check our dipstick again. Just gonna clean it off first time. Perfect. You can see the level. The rough area there is kind of an accurate measurement between the low and high. Uh, you just want it to lie somewhere in the middle. We are about done. Let's get this cover back on. Remember the four tabs we're looking to line up. We'll kind of feel it settle in 
some point right there. And you just push down lightly. You can feel them pop and secure into place. All right, time for that final step. Let's go change that pesky little oil light inside the car. Okay, we're at the final step, and that's gonna to be to reset the oil maintenance light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to do this uh, from inside the driver's seat, I have a camera. So I have a little co-pilot here that's gonna help me because <laughs> I need her to push the ignition while I hold a camera. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is push in this set light while pushing the start button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold in the set and go ahead, push the start button. And you'll get a little reading here. Do you really want to reset oil change service? Just use your little pad here, and we are going to select OK. So OK, push it in once, and we're done. That is it. Excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That's really appreciated and have a good one. <laughs>